Cloud stocks are going to start reporting earnings pretty quick with Zscaler, the first out of the gate, under a little pressure. Still down about 2% after a big winning year, though. Cybersecurity has been one of the most popular trades and successful ones in this category, cloud companies. Mr. Tom White here with me in studio. Paul McCarthy joins us from Kisco Capital. Uh, Paul, welcome back to the show. Zscaler uh, this morning down a little bit. We got Workday coming. We got CrowdStrike. How are you thinking about this group right now that is notoriously unprofitable? Well, uh, it's really a question of, uh, is there a secular trend towards uh, increased cybersecurity? Uh, you know, it's, it's sort of AI is powering both sides. The hackers have AI and now the cybersecurity companies are trying to integrate uh, AI as well. Um, and there's a concern we saw earlier this year with MGM Resorts, they, you know, were basically blackmailed by hackers. So I think, this is something that's on uh, the mind of uh, a lot of uh, companies out there and able to uh, you know, protect their uh, intellectual property. So it, you know, with, with the sector, you really want to see is you know, how are they doing on a revenue basis? Um, and is that something that they were able to capture? Um, and you know, after the close today, we have CrowdStrike and uh, Spelunk as well, and we saw Zscaler. And basically the sector, when you look at, um, they all, there's a lot of similarities in how they look in terms of, uh, you know, the technicals, they've all run up into overbought conditions into these earnings reports. So I think the Zscaler is kind of a foreshadowing of what we might see after hours with CrowdStrike in that, you know, they put up good numbers, but we have a pullback of sorts. So the real question is, is that, is the advance that we saw this year really uh, sustainable? or is there gonna be saturation and competition from all these companies over the next year or so um, that would you know, hurt their margins? So that's really the secular question. Is the pie expanding within the sector or not? Mm, I like that. And because uh, if it's not, then it becomes a little uh, intense for these companies, uh, right? Because the assumption was kind of always pre-COVID and then during COVID especially that the pie is gonna grow forever and you know, growth at any cost. Suddenly we start to see a little deal activity in the group. Uh, some of the acquisitions that we've seen, Datadog getting acquired, stuff like that may be a solution if, if the pie's not grown as much anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I mean, you know, when you look at, uh, you know, for example, CrowdStrike and Spelunk, they both, you know, generate free cash flow. So these aren't, you know, companies that are having drum, uh, trouble, issue, you know, generating cash. Um, but when you look at just from a, a revenue multiple basis, like CrowdStrike is at 15 times revenue. I think Zscaler is around the same. Uh, Spelunk is only about five times. So um, there's definitely a lot of you know potential growth priced into these stocks. And so um, I, I don't know if these you know. For, and let's point out another thing too is that uh, you know CrowdStrike is is now uh, on Amazon's platform selling their software. Spelunk partnered with Microsoft and Azure. So if we're talking about uh, M&A activity, maybe Splunk is, you know, being eyed by Microsoft. Um, so that's something to be considered as well. So, um, you know, might be, you know, an expensive buy on their part. Um, but uh, when you look at, you know, CrowdStrike, I think the market cap's like 49 billion versus 25 at Splunk. So, they're not cheap companies. So, uh, you know, if, if their margins, you know, are around mid 70% gross margins. So if those margins start to get hit, then I think maybe the M&A, you know, sort of activity starts to heat up. Mm, like that point. Uh, CrowdStrike this morning, uh, taking a little bit of a hit down more than a percent with Zscaler, but this chart's been amazing. And it seems like within this category, cyber still is the one, I guess, to closest to really being a reliable profit engine. There's still big adjustments being made from the gap to the adjusted in these stocks, but uh, is that an explanation for why they've done so much better than the rest of the sector? Um, you know, I, you know, there's games that companies can play, you know, with adjusted, <laughs> I, I just, I just focus on the free flow. And so, you know, so when you look at CrowdStrike, they're they're running about 800 million in free cash flow, uh, which is good to see for a growth company. So, if a growth company, generally speaking, if you see growth in revenues and free cash flow generation, that means the company uh, is you know planning for tomorrow. Uh, you know, so I, 
it, it's something that you know is obviously a noise when you look at earnings but you know you really cut to the chase when you look at the the free cash flow numbers so um but they are profitable so but they have to keep keep growing and I think uh, you know, CrowdStrike's been also uh, looking at their expenses. Their SGNA was, you know, over fifty percent. So I think they're looking to reduce their expense side as well. They're growing. So if they can execute, and we get some hint of that uh, after hours today. That would be a good sign uh, that the companies are being managed well. Wow. And so uh, you know, the question is, is the you know, is the market valuing them properly so and that's you know a harder question to answer yeah for sure indeed okay stick with us because i want to get your thought on work day for a sec but tom you're looking at the options for crowd strike yeah. and structured a mostly bullish trade here yeah uh you got to be wary though because we've been talking about high bar low bar a yeah lot of high, these bar companies, here. high bar here and that same thing on z scaler we've seen that little pullback uh, here even though it was a decent report uh, option markets pricing at about a plus or minus six and a half percent move fourteen dollars either way and crowd strike rsi is near that 70 level which signals overbought on a technical basis but if you think this one's going to go higher this is a strategy that takes advantage of it while reducing some of your initial costs on it uh, as opposed to maybe just buying a straight call or a call vertical I looked at buying an unbalanced call butterfly to the upside where I can offset some of those costs and my risk on this trade going out to the December 15th monthly option series. So about 17 days till expiration. So not a pure earnings play, giving yourself a little bit of duration in case the stock does fall. It has some type, time to uh, rebound here. Okay. Uh, buying the 210 call one time, selling two of the 220 strike calls, and then buying one of the 222 and a half strike calls. Uh, that uh, unbalanced call butterfly will cost you about $3.20 debit. There's your risk, 320 mm -hmm. bucks. Everything above that break even of 213.20 over the next two and a half weeks, it's only about 2% above the current share price. Yeah, you're not asking that for much. Break you're not. And this is a controlled uh, bullish trade where, hey, maybe the stock does continue to move higher. Maybe it tops out around that 220, but even above that 222 and a half strike, it's more than a double. Uh, on this type of trade. So controlling your costs on a bullish directional position here uh, by offsetting it with the unbalanced portion of this butterfly. You've been doing those trades, uh, the unbalanced call butterflies more mm -hmm. to kind of hedge yourself a little bit, but then still get a very bullish oriented trade. Right. All right, uh, hold uh, that crowd strike. Let's talk Workday. Uh, Paul, give me a quick thought on Workday real fast. Got about 45 seconds. Uh, Workday is a steady eddy. It's, you know, a less volatile industry than the cybersecurity. Uh, you know, so they're going to have uh, revenues projected to be a billion eight five, about 15% higher year over year. But it's cloud-based enterprise software for finance, HR, planning, spend management, a little a more on the boring side. But uh, they, uh, again, you know, they're generating free cash flow, about a billion and a half. They trade about 10 times revenues. 62 billion market cap. So they have a lot of room to penetrate their market. They're only about a 5% penetration. So they're worldwide. So I think that, you know, we'll look to see if they can deepen that penetration in the, uh, the call today. Nice, great stuff. Paul, thank you very much. Tom, work day just below the 52 week high, not yeah. quite as explosive as the cyber trades, but it's doing pretty well, hanging in there. Yeah, 40% uh, gains for the year. Remember, at the end of September, they actually lowered subscription revenue growth to what the street expected. Mm -hmm. They put it between 17 and 19% gains, uh, and they had previously estimated about tw over 20% gains. So the stock fell, but we've already filled that gap back to the upside on the rally that we've seen so far in November. Option markets pricing at about a plus or minus 6% move in the shares, uh, just under $14 either way. So I looked at a strategy that takes advantage of implied volatility differentials between option series, uh, where I want the stock to move, maybe that one standard de deviation, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but I take advantage of a move towards a, a specific strike. So I looked at a double calendar here, going out to the December 8th weekly series, so 10 days to expiration. I'm gonna buy the 210 strike put and the 265 strike call, uh, or actually the 250 strike call, 210, yeah. 220 put, 250 call. I've got that right now, 220 put, uh, 250 call. Sell the same options or strikes 
in the near term December 1st weekly options that mm. expire in just three days. The 220 put and the 250 call. Double calendar position, one week wide, real short term positioning. Paying roughly about $1.25 debit for that. That's your risk, 125 bucks. But if you look at a risk profile of this type of strategy, I've got a range between about 210 and about 265 to remain profitable. You see the apex is a profitability at or near either strike on this one. And the key with this type of strategy, uh, Oliver, is the near-term options are more elevated on an implied volatility basis. You're selling about an 80, 81% implied volatility on aggregate in those December 1st weekly options, and then buying about a 50% uh, in the in the uh, December 8th. So there's that differential which causes the price of this calendar to shrink. So you've only got about $125 in risk, but you just need to move. Got it, like it. So yeah. trade it for a little volatility. Yep. Uh, you know, I think it makes more sense to do this one like this than the one that's been breaking out and going in one direction, basically. Right. It kind of gives you some optionality, right. especially given that the last update they gave the market wasn't a big fan of. Right. All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks again to Paul McCarthy.